I really do apologize, but I just have to do this. I finally have some merchandise available. I really like the designs. It's printed on high quality champion clothing and it's only available for a very limited time. The link is down in the description. It physically hurts me to promote merchandise at the start of a video, but I'm sure there's some of you out there who might be interested in it and that's why I have to talk about it. Shameless self-promotion complete. Let's crack on with the tiny house. I've gone down the biggest rabbit hole watching YouTube videos about tiny house builds over the past couple days. I'm absolutely loving them. And that is 100% inspired this build, as you can probably tell, because unlike most houses in Minecraft, this thing's pretty wonky. You know, it's it's definitely off to one side. The roof is at different heights, and that is very much in keeping with a lot of the tiny houses I've seen. It seems like a mistake, but it's not. And I gotta say, if there was some kind of magical 3D printer that would allow me to take a Minecraft build and just put it out in full size in the actual materials that I've used here, I would live in this thing in a heartbeat. I absolutely love the look of it. I think I might be going through a quarter life crisis. With all that being said, although it does look incredibly idyllic on the outside, on the inside it does feel a tiny bit on the cramped side. You know, this there's, there's definitely not much room to play around. I mean, look at the bedroom. This is it. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look very comfortable. I just can't stop adding details to this thing. I mean, I really need to start doing redstone bits, but I can't help myself. Okay, I would say I would say everything is done. Despite having next to no space, one thing that I've discovered with these tiny houses is that they have about a million potted plants, so I've tried to capture that essence here. I think we could start adding some redstone bits. Thing number one, a constant supply of organic vegan food. And that is all going to be pumped into this chest right here from a farm that is going to be underneath the house. Now I'm thinking the best type of food farm that we can go for because it's fully automatic, players should never have to come down here is probably a melon farm. And we can make a pretty decently efficient one in a relatively small space. At this point, it's probably worth pointing out that this tiny house is going to be a little bit like an iceberg in that like 1% of it is going to be above the ground. It's going to be huge underneath. Now I've just had a bit of a thought because this farm is going to be quite loud. I've decided that actually we should probably build it quite a long way away from the house so that the sound doesn't reach it. So we can have a very pleasant experience when we're inside. This should probably be far enough away. So this is the item elevator that I'm going to wire up. And this is the space that I have for our automatic melon farm. I love playing in creative mode because it means I can go completely crazy with my powered rails. I don't have to ration them. We got that that is now being converted to farmland then we have all of the pistons that are going to be breaking all of our melons and then we have all of the observers which are going to be detecting when the melons grow so they can activate the pistons which are going to break the melons now i've shown this farm design a bunch of times in the past so i'm not going to spend too long on it but as you can see it is working you know, as soon as the melon grows, this little plant thing, the stalk, will move over to where the melon is, and the observer detects that, and then the pistons fire, and it crushes the melon. I mean, it's it's about as simple as it gets. Then we have this little hopper minecart down at the bottom here, which will be picking up all of those melons, and we'll be dropping them off into here. I mean, that's it. That, that really is all there is to it. And it seems to be working incredibly well, because in the time it took for me to build this drop evator, we got over one stack of melons. Now, I'm curious to see if those items actually make their way up to the top let's have a look is there anything appearing in this chest no that's maybe not good okay they they're getting to here and then they're stopping and that's just because this redstone torch is missing i actually think we could be onto a winner yes melons are arriving and they don't seem to be getting stuck anywhere in the drop of Ata, and most importantly the drop of Ata isn't making any noise because there's nothing worse than a ticking drop of Ata. so that is redstone system number one all constructed in our little tiny house you would never know that there is a gigantic farm running melons into this chest and i think that's beautiful now it's time for redstone system number two the super smelter and i kind of want this to work in a similar way to how our melon farm works in that i want it to be underneath the ground i want it to be as if it's not actually there so this chest here is going to be the output chest and I think we throw the items that we want to smelt on the ground, they get picked up and then transported down. Now the super smelter is going to be the standard 22, I think, 22 furnace super smelter design, which allows us to smelt items at the maximum speed the hoppers will allow. So basically, pretty fast. The only slight issue is I made a little bit of a miscalculation in terms of depth and I've run out of earth. This thing is now poking out quite a bit and it's only going to get worse because it's about this tall. The other issue is the coal refueling. Now, I worked on some designs with item filters and I built up the other half of the super smelter with the automatic coal refueler. But then I realized, of course, because this design relies on a constant flow of items and we don't have a dedicated coal input because we don't have space, 
That's actually not going to work. Now I am going to try and rack my brain for solutions to this problem. I do have a few ideas with minecarts, but it might end up just being a trap door in the ground that we then drop into to refuel the furnaces when they run out. It's a little bit impractical, but I think that's the joy of living in a tiny house. That's basically the excuse that I'm going to use for any inefficiencies that I have in the designs today. Right, there's a number of things that we have to test here. First things first, you have to test this item elevator. So let's see if I throw these items in here and then make my way through this horrible mess. I mean, <laughs> what am I doing? It works. It all works. I don't know if I'm working, but this works. Now time for the big full system test. So throwing these items onto the floor, they've been picked up. So that's a very good sign. And if you drop down here, we should see all of the furnaces switch on at once. Yes. Yes. That has actually done as it's worked. That is fantastic. And now we are gradually sending the output from the super smelter up into the chest. Now the item elevator is a little bit slower than the super smelter, but still, this is good. And now the outside of the house actually looks okay and doesn't have a gigantic scar in the landscape with a huge super smelter sticking out of it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not the best. It's not the best terraforming job I've ever done, but it definitely hides it all right. Soon we're going to be moving on to the job that I'm absolutely terrified of. It's essentially the job that I've been putting off for the entire episode. But first, I'm going to put it off for a little while longer because I think we need some form of crafting bench swapper. We need something that's going to swap between a crafting bench and things like stone cutters and all the useful bits that you need inside your base. Now, the way that I intend to do this is a tiny little piston feed tape. So we hit the button, it will retract down and... Oh, that's true. Okay, I guess the button can't go there, but maybe it can go here? Or maybe we get super fancy and put it here? And then push the signal across and do some funky bits? To be fair, that does actually... That does seem to be doing the trick, which is quite cool. And now I think I have a full piston feed tape all linked up, so these pistons should fire first. And then these pistons fire second, which means that we'll get a full rotation of blocks, in theory. I have, however, gone in with full confidence and I've got all of the proper blocks in place. So if this doesn't work, that's going to be upsetting. But it looks like it does. So there is my upgrading thing. And then I've got the fletching table, which... <laughs> I, I forgot, that doesn't actually do anything. Give me a second. So I've got my cartography table, and then when I hit the button again... We've got the stone cutter, and then everything cycles back around to the crafting bench. So this, this is a pretty sweet little system. Now, I may have broken tiny house rules here by replacing a potted plant with something useful, but it, I just, I kind of needed it. Now, there is one thing that I haven't worked out yet, which is how we're going to do any form of enchanting system. I mean, is there any way, like any way at all, that I could get an enchanting table down there and then have enough books around it to get a max level? No. There totally isn't. But thankfully, I've come up with a new idea that works really nicely, and I've just covered up some of the exposed bits that are outside, and I just want to say how nice it is to have a house that's surrounded by farmland. I've never done this before, and it's definitely something I'm going to be doing more often. I just think it looks lovely. I've also reconfigured a tiny bit of the interior here, so instead of having the ladder going in this direction, which is a little bit cramped, it now goes up the back wall, which gives us a tiny bit more space, more room for potted plants, which of course is a tiny house must, but also... I do actually have access to this enchanting table, and it is a level 31, which is pretty ridiculous. Another thing that's pretty ridiculous is how many melons we managed to get during the process of recording this video. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. We're going to need more storage. Which actually brings me quite nicely onto the thing that this house is missing. Storage. I've been scared of it. I kind of have this idea, this slight idea of how I want it to work. But I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on it. Basically, it's a shulker box request system. This is actually one of the original concepts that we had for Sahara in Hermitcraft Season 6. But the idea is, you have a book, you write the name of the shulker box or the type of items, for example, stone or redstone in the book. You throw it into the system. The system then gives you the shulker box with those items. You can do whatever you want with it. And then when you throw the shulker box back in, you'll get the book back so you can request a different shulker box. Now, I'm only going to be building this on quite a small scale for this build, simply because, well, I, I'm not sure it's going to work. But of course, if it does work, then it could be scaled up to be absolutely enormous. So first things first, it's all about making up these item filters so that we can actually decipher what book is what. Then it's time to create our little shulker box storing cells. So this is where the shulker boxes are actually going to be stored. They're going to be stored inside these droppers. And then when the book comes through, 
that matches up with the type of shulker box. The redstone torch will fire, it will shoot out the shulker box into a hopper line, which will then run it across into a drop of Ata that's going to be somewhere over here, which that one is definitely, definitely going to be a challenge to build. Goodness me. Now, if you're wondering how I'm actually going to get the shulker box back into the correct location, I'm essentially going to use what I'm calling an absentee system. So whatever dropper is empty, obviously doesn't have a shulker box in it, and that means that when the shulker box comes back into the system, that is clearly the spot that it needs to go back into. So the system knows this using this very simple little circuitry right here. Any droppers that are empty, the hopper will allow items to flow into. And that should allow everything to work properly, he says with everything crossed that can possibly be crossed. The scary thing about this redstone contraption is that it kind of can't be tested until every single component is in place. And <laughs> that's quite a lot of components to get in place before you know if it's actually gonna work. One thing I will say is though, I am incredibly proud of how tightly we have managed to compact every single piece of the puzzle for this tiny house. I mean, look at this. So here is the item elevator, which is gonna send the items upwards. And it just about slots between all of the redstone contraptions. With that being said, my idea is totally flawed because books and quills don't stack. For some reason, I thought they stacked. What? Thankfully, I have come up with a solution though. It does cost you a level each time you want to use it, but instead of using books, we're going to make use of renamed pieces of paper. So essentially very short books, incredibly short books. So now it's time to try this thing out for the first time. I have preemptively renamed this piece of paper to redstone. So if I drop that into this chest right here, which is our paper input chest, that all sounds good. Yes, okay, so this is our redstone shulker box. We can do whatever we want with it, take things out, put things in, and then we can dump that back into the system. And that should sort back into place. And we have got our piece of paper back. Okay, so if I then rename this to be something else, say stone, and then put it in here. This is where, <laughs> this is where things get interesting. Okay. Okay, okay, there we go, stone. So we've got our stone shulker box. We dump that back into the system and that should get stored back in the same place. Now what I'm curious about right now is if I then go for redstone again, has that item or that shulker box gone back in the correct position so that I can actually re-request it? Do you get what I mean? Because we need to make sure that this can be actually reused, otherwise it's really pointless. So here goes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is this is super cool. <laughs> this is super cool. Can you imagine this working on a larger scale in your base? Can you imagine how cool that would be? I want to do one more. Okay, because clearly we're having far too much luck. All right. I can't remember if I did concrete. I did, and we should get ourselves a white shulker box if everything is functioning properly. Here goes. I heard the click, so that means it's detected something. And there it is. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I'm chuffed to bits with this because, I don't know, it's just a fun thing to have inside of your tiny house. I mean, this place is great. Look, we've got thousands of melons. This is ridiculous. We've got a working super smelter system. We've got a working sorting system, shulker box storage system and request system. I mean, that's pretty cool. We've got ourselves an automatic swapping crafting bench area that allows us to go through all the useful bits we've got a fully enchanted enchanting table i mean this is all max level we've got all the bits that we need we've got a bed up at the top what more do you need why do i bother with massive bases i could just have a place like this now will be it would be a very short hermit craft season if i decided to build something like this as my main base but i'm a fan i am a huge huge fan it's just been, it's been a great day. I've really, really enjoyed building this. I've had a beaming smile on my face the entire time. And you know what? It hasn't stopped me wanting to make a real life tiny house. Vicky's not going to be very impressed. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. And now it's time for me to do something awful once again. And that is to shamelessly self-promote for the second time in one video. You know, but this merchandise is only available for a very limited time. I want to make sure that everybody who wants it actually gets an opportunity to get it. I don't want anyone feeling like they missed out. So the links are down in the description. It's really high quality stuff and it will ship before Christmas.